Comitants went made easy. A case-based approach. Part 1. Before we start, we have to determine the eye with hypertropia, the hypertropic eye. When we have hypertropia in the right eye, it means that we are facing hypotropia in the left eye. And we put a symbol for this R over L. It means hypertropia in the right eye. When we see hypertropia in the left eye, it means that there is hypotropia in the right eye, and we write it as L over R. L over R means left hypertropia. We have to use the alternate cover test in order to determine the eye with the hypertropia because we are going to use the eye with the hypertropia as a reference in all our steps. So this is an example. The cover now is in front of the right eye which has hypertropia. I'm going to move the cover to in front of the left eye and to see the movement of the right eye. If the right eye moves downwards, it means that there is right eye hypertropia. Then I move the cover test to be in front of the right eye again and I monitor the movement of the left eye. If the left eye moves up, it means that there is left eye hypotropia. This is the movement again. So this means there is hypertropia in the right eye. This means there is hypotropia in the left eye. But this case will be referred to as right eye hypertropia. We do not refer to this as left eye hypotropia. Case number one, a patient came with right eye hypertropia. It means that he has left eye hypotropia. And sometimes we may see the patient as having left eye hypotropia. Sometimes we don't see the hypertropia, we see the hypotropia. So this is R over L. Now let us start the steps to determine the affected muscle. First, I use this, these two squares, and I put on these two squares the uh, muscles. I start with the muscles that are responsible for elevation. So in the right eye, we have the superior rectus in the lateral part, and the inferior oblique in the medial part. And same can be said for the left eye. Then I put the muscles that are responsible for depression. I put the inferior rectus in the lateral part in the right eye and the superior oblique in the medial part in the right eye and same for the left eye. So. It is a case of right eye hypertropia. This is step one. In step one, I, I have to define four. This means that I have to define the four muscles that are accused for this problem. Rule number one, in any vertical squint, four muscles are accused. First of all, I uh, draw a dotted red um, uh, squares to show the problem in the right eye and in the left eye. The squares should show me the type of vertical squint. So in the right eye, I draw the square um, in, uh, in an upper part and in the left eye, I will draw the square in a lower part. 
because it is right hypertropia and at the same time it is left eye hypotropia. According to this, I can define the four muscles that may be responsible for this problem. These muscles are the inferior rectus and the superior oblique in the right eye and the inferior oblique and the superior rectus in the left eye. Step 2. I do right left gaze to exclude two of the four muscles. We come to rule 2. Vertical squint increases in the field of action of the affected muscle or muscles. So keep this in mind. Vertical squint increases when the eyes move to the field of action of the affected muscle or muscles. And we will see how this happens. This is the right eye with the hypertropia. I put a torch in the right side and ask the patient to look at the torch. The patient looks at the torch and then uh, before I move the, the torch to the left side, I monitor the position of the right eye with the hypertropia. In this case, I can notice that there is almost no hypertropia in this case when the patient looks at the right side. And when I move the torch to the left side, I can see that the hypertropia in the right eye has increased. So this is the movement again. This is right gaze. There is almost no hypertropia in the right eye. And this is the left gaze where I can see that the right eye hypertropia has increased so much. Sometimes you may see that the patient is focusing using his right eye. In this case, you may miss what is going on because the left eye will have the hypertropia while the right eye looks as straight. So in this, uh, I always, I always use my hand on the nose in order to prevent the right eye from focusing while it is looking at the right, uh, at the left side when I have uh, OD hypertropia. And of course, we can use the same technique when the patient looks to the right side also in order to, uh, to be sure that uh, the position of the of the eye is real. So in this case, when I put my hand, automatically the patient will use his left uh, left eye in order to focus on the torch, and the uh, right eye hypertropia will appear. So when the patient looks, this patient looks to the left side. He is looking at the field of action, actually, of the left eye superior rectus and the right eye superior oblique, as they are shown uh, within green circles. And when the patient looks to the right side, he is looking at the field of action of the right inferior rectus and left inferior oblique. Since the patient, um, since uh, the uh, hypertropia has disappeared when the patient is looking uh, in, on to the right side, uh, to the field of action of the inferior rectus and inferior oblique, so it means that these two muscles are not affected. So I am going to delete them from my list. So as you see, I have now two muscles. So I go to the step three. In step three, I do tilt head to exclude one of the two muscles. Now comes rule number three. Hypertropia increases towards the affected superior, whatever the superior is, superior rectus or superior oblique. So memorize this rule in mind, hypertropia increases towards the affected superior. 
So this is the case again. The patient tilted his head to the left, to his left. As you see, the hypertropia has disappeared, while when he tilted his head to his right, the hypertropia has increased. So we come to our chart. So when the patient tilted his head to his left, the hypertropia uh, disappeared. So I will delete the muscle that he tilted his head towards, to which he tilted his head towards. So I will delete the left superior rectus because if the superior rectus is responsible for this problem, it means that when he tilts his head towards the left side, then um, the problem should increase. Vice versa, when he tilted his head to the left side, to the, to the right side, sorry, to his right side, the uh, hypertropia in the right eye increased so much. And this means that the superior oblique in the right eye is responsible because he tilted his head towards this muscle. So in this case, the patient has right superior oblique palsy or paresis. Case number two. A patient came with OS hypertropia. Step number one. Define the four muscles that are responsible. And don't forget that in any vertical squint, four muscles are accused. So I go to my chart and I draw hypertropia in the left eye, meaning hypotropia in the right eye. By this, I can now determine the four muscles that are responsible for this problem. They are superior rectus and inferior oblique in the right eye, and superior oblique and inferior rectus in the left eye. Step number two. I have to do right-left gaze in order to exclude two muscles of the four muscles. And don't forget that vertical squint increases in the field of action of the affected muscle or muscles. I ask the patient to look at the torch at the right. In this case, I noticed that the left eye hypertropia has disappeared. I asked the patient to look to the left side and to avoid letting the, uh, uh, or to prevent the right eye from focusing on the torch, I put my hand and I let the left eye to uh, look straight, and as you see, the right eye has hypotropia, which means that the left eye has hypertropia. So the patient, when the patient looks at his right, he is looking to the field of action of the right superior rectus and left superior oblique. Now, when I ask the patient to look at the left, as he, uh, at his left, so he is looking at the field of action of right eye inferior oblique and left eye inferior rectus. Now, since the left eye hypertropia has disappeared when the patient looked at the right, I am going to exclude these two muscles because they are not responsible. So I have two muscles now, the right inferior oblique and left inferior rectus, and I have to exclude one of them by doing step three. I will tilt head to exclude one of those two muscles, and don't forget that hypertropia increases away from the affected inferior. Now, this rule is different from that one in case one. Hypertropia increases away, not towards, away from the affected inferior. In case one, I mentioned hypertropia increases 
towards the affected superior. So towards superior, it increases, and away from inferior, it increases also. We come to the case, left eye hypertropia. I ask the patient to tilt his head towards his left. As you see, I notice that the, patient, the hypertropia has disappeared. While when I ask the patient to tilt his head to, towards his right shoulder, I found that the left eye hyper, uh, hypertropia has increased so much. So I come to my chart. When the patient tilted his head to his left shoulder, the hypertropia disappeared. While when he tilted his head towards his right shoulder, the hypertropia has increased so much. So in this case, I'm going to exclude the right eye inferior oblique. Why? Because when the patient tilted his head away from the left inferior rectus, the hypertropia increased. So, so the, inf the left inferior rectus is the responsible. While if the right inferior oblique was the responsible, so the hypertropia should have increased when the patient tilted his head towards the left side. So in conclusion, case number two is left eye hypertropia due to inferior rectus paresis or pulse. Thank you very much. I invite you to join us on Sinjap Academy on Telegram, where you will enjoy a lot of discussions in topography, refractive surgery, keratoconus, and much more. Goodbye.